Campfire is brought to you by. We are so excited to announce that the Campfire After Dark a live tour is coming back. We are first returning to Los Angeles on November 20th at the Bourbon Room. And then we will be in London. Yes, the first international date of the Campfire After Dark live experience is coming to London, of course, because this is where it all began at our first meet and greet. On December 8th, we will be at Neon 194. This live show is presented by our friends over at AEG. So if you haven't gotten your tickets already, what are you waiting for? December is right around the corner. Every Kempire After Dark live experience is so different than the, than the other. So make a trip. Or if you live in London, come to the Kempire After Dark live experience. And just announced, Washington, D.C., we're coming back. We're coming back. Yes, we're coming back to Union State. Washington, D.C. Come out. Get your tickets are now available. Let's sell out all three shows for 2024 and the early part of 2025. We'll be in D.C. on January 24th. More information on all tour dates will be available in the description. I'll see you guys soon. You're listening to Kempire here on the Kempire Radio Network. Hey, y'all. Welcome to the Kempire channel. We're live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, and behind the scenes here on TikTok for our weekly recap, our weekly recap of Love and Marriage Huntsville. And honestly, I could have used an episode where they just really focused more on the girl's trip because those first 10 minutes were far more entertaining than what we got for the rest of the episode. So this won't be a a long recap, okay? No. This will not be a long recap. I'm sorry. Plus, I have something to do anyway. But (laughs) that being said, I'm here. I'm here and I'm going to talk about it. Okay. And we're going to make the most of it. And producers, the next time you decide that you want to make an episode surrounded around Trisha, think again. (laughs) Look, think again. And Trisha, this is not uh, this is not a bad thing. You're not great reality television. You barely want to speak. I don't know. I can't even believe you because it feels like you are lying about certain things. And before I was like, oh, I don't think she's lying. But now it seems that like you've been caught in lies. I'm not interested in Trisha. I don't want an episode surrounded around around Trisha's stuff. But okay. Trisha signed the divorce papers at the end of this episode. So fine. We never need to see or talk about Trisha again. I was bored. This was probably their worst episode. And this is only episode three of season 922. I don't love the way that they split up this season because it doesn't make sense. We ended last last season with this girl's trip and we're beginning this new season with the girl's trip. You guys don't make sense. And I don't know if it's the production. I'm assuming it's own. What are you guys thinking? Oprah, what are you thinking? <laughs> Look, what are you thinking? But Oprah doesn't really, I know she's like the creative, you know, person over there, but she doesn't own own like she used to. She owns like uh, like 5% if she even owns that anymore. What are you guys doing over there? Like these, everyone complains about the same thing about these seasons being broken up. It's like weird. <sighs> Anyways, <laughs> I'm going to complain about every single week, but I will say the first 10 minutes were far more interesting than the rest of the episode. And I do feel like a lot of people are out here being hypocrites, saying one thing and then doing another in the confessionals. But they all do that. They do that in all reality shows. But we have to remember when they film these confessionals, they are filming them weeks, months after they film those scenes. I really wish in the moment we got real reactions because it would be far more telling. A lot of stuff happens in between. So what they say in the confessionals is because something's happened that we haven't seen yet and they're really like, yeah, I'm not friends with that that person, so I'm going to be shady in this confessional. You know, Philly John says, you know what, Philly? That doesn't make my life better. <laughs> Philly John says, glad I don't waste my time watching. So I just spent two hours of my life watching? Yeah, I watched it twice. Feel sorry for me. Because I I watch it twice because I pick up on little things that I didn't see the first time around. All right, I said I'm not going to make this long. But before we get into um, this, our show today is sponsored by our friends over at Uncommon Goods. The holiday season is officially here, guys. So it's important to really start your Christmas shopping. And I'm not just saying that because they're a sponsor. I'm saying that because, honestly, time's a ticking. Before I know it, I already have to head off to London for the Kempire After Dark live experience. Okay, before we get to Uncommon Goods. I'm coming to L.A. this week. Have you gotten your tickets? <laughs> We're not sold out. And L.A., I thought you guys would sell us out. Shout out to New York. Shout out to D.C. D.C., y'all are still selling like hotcakes. I'm coming to D.C. on January 24th. Yeah, I'm going to keep it real. We're not sold out, L.A. And I thought that we would be. 
Maybe I should have went to Houston first. <laughs> Maybe I should have went to Houston first. Maybe I should have went to Dallas first. <laughs> Just saying. I keep it real, all right? Go get your tickets today. I know it's a Wednesday evening, but look, I'm out. I'm out. I'm telling, I'm telling jokes and giving you my opinion. Go get your tickets, LA. All right. All right. Melissa says, <laughs> Melissa, you're right. Melissa on Facebook says, perhaps the shows needs to be dropped from the list of shows you watch. I agree. And maybe it will be, honestly. Because at this point, I only recap it because you guys keep asking me about it. I don't love the show. Anyways. I'll be coming to LA this week. Go get your ticket. Ticket information is available in the description. Then I'm coming to London. London, I promise you, we won't talk about Love and Marriage Huntsville. <laughs> I probably, I don't, I'm very, like, every show is different. So I don't always talk about Love and Marriage Huntsville unless someone in the audience brings it up. We did talk about Love and Marriage Huntsville during the summer because we lost Kiki at the time. So we did talk about Kiki when I was in Nashville and Atlanta. Okay. See, look, look, Houston coming out. Look, Houston coming out. Connie, I would love to come to Arkansas, but I have a feeling it'd be me and you <laughs> at that show. <laughs> Kimberly says, whoa, 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 Campbell, look at my hat. Hold on. This is available in the merch store. Whoa, 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 Campfire. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I got dust on this thing. <laughs> anyways. Anyways, moving on. So... L.A., I'm coming this week. London, I'm coming next month. Washington, D.C., I'm coming January. All ticket information is available in the description. Today's live show is sponsored by our friends over at Uncommon Goods. They say this, spark something uncommon this holiday with just the right gift from Uncommon Goods. The busy holiday season is here, and Uncommon Goods makes it less stressful with incredible hand-picked gifts for everyone on your list, all in one spot. Gifts that spark joy, wonder, delight, and that it's exactly what I wanted feeling. They scoured the globe for original handmade, absolutely remarkable things. Somehow they know exactly the perfect gift for every single person you know. So to get 15% off your gift, your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com backslash Kempire. That's uncommongoods.com slash Kempire for 15% for off. 15 Okay, don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon Goods, we're all out of the ordinary. More information on Uncommon Goods will be available in the description. Okay, all right, moving on. Uh, let me bring up my notes. All right, so we start off this week's episode of Love and Marriage Huntsville. Let me bring up all my stuff here. Hold on, y'all. So we start off this episode of Love and Marriage Huntsville, but still on this girl's trip. And honestly, no, normally I'm like, oh God, we're still on this trip. It's, you know, this is, this is the longest trip ever. But it's been good. It's been interesting. It's been dynamic. Don't you think? Look, don't you think? Look. <laughs> so, let me just kind of go. The, the, the ladies all wear white. They go to, the, go to the table. There's no seating arrangement. Melody ends up um, moving Sunny because she was sitting right next to Destiny. Was her, was that... Melody being a producer, was she really looking out for Destiny in that moment? I don't know if she was really looking out for Destiny, because I really don't believe that Melody likes Destiny. I don't. I think she was probably being a producer in that moment. However, it was nice of her, because it didn't, it didn't help that Destiny, you know, her facial, her facial expression during this entire dinner was just sort of, like, pissy. Just, like, the entire time for, like, no reason. And again, I'm saying no reason, but we're watching an edited show. Maybe there was something that happened that was edited out, and it, that's why we, it's not making sense. But that's the face that she was giving at her Madani grand re re reopening. So it's hard to, to decipher whether or not it's just Melody. I mean, not Melody, uh, Destiny. Okay. Anyway, so Melody moves Sunny, as I said before, so that she could move, move Lauren next to her. Okay, this was the first time we even heard Lauren speak. Okay, in this in this scene, I don't know. She spoke last week. She spoke last week. Anyways, Kimmy decides to say because you know Kimmy says she doesn't like a girls trip. She didn't want to be on this girls trip. So she says that by the end of it, she's like, you know, I've never been on a girls trip. She doesn't do girls trips. Here's the thing, though, Kimmy, you've never been on a girls trip, but you don't like a girls trip. 
can someone make that make sense for me? Okay, I'll make sense for for myself. Just the thought of women coming together for you doesn't seem like it would be fun. Girls can be catty, women can be cat. Is that is that what you're you're saying? That's why you haven't done a girls trip. But she said by the end of this girls trip, you know, we had resolve, everything worked out, it was good. Melody, you did a great job. Okay. Lauren, Melody's friend, says that she loves how the group resolved their issues. Melody then says, out of the blue, because this is Melody being a producer, she's like, Destiny, you don't agree? <laughs> Destiny, you don't agree? And Destiny was like, huh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, she was like, you know, do I have to react like everyone's reacting? So that's when Destiny in her confessional, she's like, I'm over everybody, you know, kissing Melody's ass and this and this and this and this and that, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, Oh, look, again, we're watching an edited show, so maybe there was a lot more, a lot more happening on this episode that we that we didn't see in regards to everyone. Like, oh my God, Mel, you did a great job, blah, 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 blah. She did host a trip. The trip was definitely interesting to watch. However, thinking to myself, Destiny, this is giving hater. It's giving jealous. So you're sitting there jealous because they're saying you that Melody did a good job on the trip? Like, this is this is not... No one's saying that you got to suck up to Melody. You could be like, you know what? This was a great trip. Was it not a great trip? Because you were in the hallway after your, your beef with Melody saying, I'm sorry. I, so, I love you. <laughs> that was you. And I don't know the timeline of things, but that maybe was what? A couple of days? Not even a couple of days. Probably like the day before. <laughs> you were like... Across the room in the in the hallway to Melody, I'm sorry, I love you, and and this is why when people say you know Melody you know harps on things and she doesn't let things go, this is why because in the confessional this woman is just like I, you know everyone's sucking up to Melody kissing her ass. I don't feel like anyone was kissing her kissing her ass. I don't see Kimmy as an as an ass kisser or anything like that. So I was sort of like. So you're just hating to hate. You're just hating to hate. You're just sitting there being miserable. It's weird. Like, you're one minute you're good, the next minute you're, like, not good. You were in the middle, of, you were in the hallway sucking up to you. Like, I want to sit next to Melody. Can I sit next to Melody? Is it because Melody hasn't fully embraced you since you did that? Is that why now all of a sudden by the end of the trip you're, like, ready to go? I'm like, what? What is going on? Like, it, it was, it was uncalled for because there's a lot of things that we can say about Melody being a producer, being a a, a, a starter, an ish starter, a confessional gang. There's a lot of things we can say about Melody, but you just don't make it easy for us to defend you. That's why when I start talking about the Sunny part, I'm gonna be twerking on the fence because Sunny, you weren't great either. <laughs> because so Destiny in in the moment says that what why she's unhappy is because that Nell brought up and everyone was talking to Sunny about having children with her ex. So she says she didn't like that. And Nell is immediately apologetic. She's like, I'm so sorry. That is that was not my intention. And honestly, I don't believe that was Nell's intention either. Okay. But I think Destiny didn't want to say how she really felt and that she didn't like that everyone was sucking up to Mel and everyone was like, you know, giving Mel her flowers for hosting a really great trip and continuing dialogue and people having resolve at the end of the trip. She didn't say that in the moment, though, because she knows she would have came across looking jealous and as a hater. So she makes it about her issues with Sunny, which really is no issue, because I told you last week, that was just Destiny trying to have a moment, trying to have a scene. Very much what Melody said. That's what Destiny does. She tries to have a moment. She tries to have a moment. Let me see what you guys are saying in the chat. God's Child says, Destiny is a hypocrite. She's done countless interviews, lies, and confessionals geared only to do- dogging. Mel, move on. You're not friends anymore. <laughs> Damn. Look, that that is the energy that she was giving. However, because she's a Taurus like me, I can understand her sitting at the table like, I just want to be home. I don't want to sit around in this group of people and listen to anybody. Like, like I understand that energy. If she had just said that, I'd probably be like, yeah, I get it, girl. You just want to be home. You don't really want to be sitting here with a group of people. But I guess any, any excuse is better than none. So her main excuse is the fact that, oh, you know, everybody was talking about Des- uh, Sunny having a baby. So Sunny... 
I can't agree with you here, Sonny, Sonny, because Sonny literally says, did I write it down? Let me see. Hold on. Destiny says that she was uncomfortable with the Sunny stuff. And then Sonny, in, in Sonny's situation, so she doubles, doubles down and says that she, was, she wasn't friends with Destiny. But before that, she mentions betrayal. And I was like, what is Sonny saying? Sonny, you're not making sense. Because very much like what Destiny said, the minute you, you talked about betrayal in the friend group, I said to myself, she was like, certain people can acknowledge that certain people have been betrayed. And I said to myself, what is she talking about? How how is this relevant to you right now? And Destiny brings that up and she's just like, I find it interesting that you want to use the word betrayal. So that's when Sunny doubles down and says, We were never friends. Sonny, you just said to her when y'all were on the streets <laughs> of St. Thomas, talking about, oh, you know, we were getting to know each other. So were you friends or were you not friends? We were getting to know each other. What? Were you friends or are you not friends? Because I wonder how all of you would feel if there was a person that you were getting to know as a friend ended up started dating your man. How would you feel about that? So that's where Sonny loses me because one, one minute you're saying we were getting to know each other. Now you're saying we were never friends. Okay. So she's like, I apologize to... Sonny says, I apologized to you the night before. I apologized again. And... And, and she's like, you, you, uh, what did she say? Uh, you know, do you receive it or something like that? And Destiny was like, I don't receive it. Destiny, here's the thing with Destiny too, why I get frustrated. Sonny, I think you're a hypocrite and I think you, you talk from two sides of your face. But Destiny, I think you are prolonging this issue so you have relevancy on this show. Because if you make up with Sonny, basically that's going to be you losing your storyline and losing your position on the show. You're trying to secure your position on the show. It's very clear because right now you're doing any interview, you'll be on anyone's couch, on anyone's podcast, on anyone's stream yard in order to juice out your your next 15 seconds of fame on the show. Because you know next next season, season 10,000, that you might not be on it. You're being very strategic. Can I blame you? No, but it's so obvious what you're doing. So you're trying to prolong this issue with Sonny. Was was the issue with Sonny valid for you to be a little annoyed and pissed? Yes. However, now you're dragging it out. <laughs> and I'm over you dragging it out. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of you and the Sonny stuff. It's not interesting at all because you're both fighting over a trash man that's sitting in, in jail in St. Louis because Dum Dum decided to go to uh, another state when he wasn't supposed to go to another state. <laughs> <laughs> you both are fighting over that man. That's who y'all are fighting over. Okay? Sonny's over here. I, 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 I'm the wife. I got the prize. Fool, you did not get the prize. Because of what? Oh, because he's good looking? I'd much rather be out here in, the, in these streets with an ugly man that has paid sense and is not locked up and they won't let him out. That doesn't have consistent, consistently being locked up. I'd much rather... Honestly, I'd much rather a Baroque man out here that's a decent human me- being with maybe with a little shaky credit, but he ain't got no rap sheet. I don't want that, dear Lord. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm being facetious, dear Lord. <laughs> dear Lord, I am not, I am not just saying that's what I want. I'm just saying I'd much rather if I had to choose between a Moses... <laughs> No, he's got to have good credit. <laughs> got to have ambition. <laughs> just like... Mm. Honestly, I could talk this entire recap just about the first 10 minutes. I could care less about Trisha. Mar- uh, well, we'll talk about Marcel and Tisha and scene. That was a little interesting. I could care less about everything else in this episode. <laughs> Courtney said, not shaky credit. If, it, if I had to choose between a Moses and a shaky credit man... I take the shaky credit. <laughs> we can, because at least shaky credit you can fix. Shaky credit you can fix. And you can fix that quick. Okay? I'm just saying. I'm not saying that I did that before. <laughs> Some of y'all out here asking the wrong questions on your first dates. Have you on a first date asked a person what their credit score is? Okay, maybe not on the first date. <laughs> Some of y'all asking the wrong quest- questions. So Destiny and Sonny fighting over Moses, that is no prize. Oh, because he's good looking? Let me tell you something. There are plenty of good looking men in the world. 
Y'all don't need to be fighting over this one. But I know why Destiny's doing She's doing it so she has some relevancy on this show. <sighs> oh, <laughs> take T. It's Tay T says, Kempar, can I put a zero in your vote box? Guys, if you had to rate this week's episode of A Love and Marriage Huntsville, how would you rate it? Huh? Uh, see, look, Unique says, I am not a ride or die either, Kemp. Just saying. No. No. Just saying. <laughs> Connie says, this Sunday devotional was sponsored by Uncommon Goods and the Kempar After Dark Live experience. Go get your tickets for LA today. All right. Ooh, Ashley said he's not good looking. Look, okay, everyone's going to have a difference of opinion. I think Moses is good looking. But when I know who Moses is now, I'm like, I'm not interested. For me, as a tourist, the more I get to know who you are, the more I'm like, eh. Like, mm, like the good looking fades for me. I know some of you are just strictly about your the looks. Look, I like a good looking person. However, the more I get to know a person, if they are a trash human being, the uglier they become. Okay? Just saying. Unless it's just a wham, bam, thank you, man. Then you don't care. But but Sonny married him. So Destiny says she's not willing to move forward with, with Sonny. Fine. We know. But Melody does say, you know, uh, confirm that Sonny was a little stank when she was talking and her facial expression. So I was like, she had, she looked, she had Destiny's back in that moment. All right. So Zesty says she does not receive the apology. So she she wants to drag this storyline out for the next season. We honestly don't care, Destiny. We honestly don't care. And you you're lucky that you even got two seasons in a row. It's because of the janky season system that they have set up over there at Love and Marriage Huntsville. Let's be on, honest. Ooh, Tennessee girl says Destiny was a bam bam. bam thank you, ma'am. Mm. <laughs> like, I am not going to even highlight some of the, the things that y'all are saying in there. De- she said for 15 years. Oh, Lord. I mean, yeah, they had a 15-year friendship relationship, and it, it wasn't serious relationship. They weren't exclusive to each other, but okay. All right, fine. Fine. When Dr. Shanita decides to chime in in the, the Sunny and Destiny conversation, she shuts Dr. Shanita down. And honestly, Dr. Shanita, you were doing a lot. You were doing a lot this trip, and I get it. Whatever reason, I don't know if someone put a battery in your back. If that that battery um, had Melody's face on it, I don't know. <laughs> but you were doing too much, and maybe that's just your personality. And you would do too much in every situation. What's her sign? <laughs> Is she a Leo? <laughs> I was, doc, doc, and I appreciate Destiny shutting you down because you did not need to involve yourself in this conversation. It has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with you. And if everyone else is staying out of it and they're more in tune to the situation, that means you should stay out of it too. This is not for you to have a moment. So Melody, she's like, okay, so that's done. Everyone's, you're not going to move on. You're not receiving it. We know what your boundaries are. We know not to bring up, you know, the baby talk in front of Destiny. Fine. The fine. So I'm going to read a poem. So she shares a photo that she's going to have everyone sign, and then she's going to print a a version for everyone. Honestly, I would want... I don't know if she's going to have them sign the front or the back. I'd much rather them sign the back. I don't want you... I don't want your signature all over the the group photo. That's just me, though. So Melody gets up, and she recites a poem. Roses are red, violets are blue, I'm the queen bee, and neither are you. That's not, what, that's not what she said, but fine, okay? She wanted to have a cutesy demure moment. She got her cutesy demure moment, okay? And that's it. That's all that happened in the episode. Oh, no, there was more. There was more. <sighs> Trisha and Ken, they have this scene. Trisha, you, I, I don't, look, I'm not going to deny that Melody gave Trisha weird energy, and maybe because she knew that they were talking about Trisha and Martell possibly having something. Maybe. Okay? However, I'm going to say, Melody gave Trisha weird energy before, even before the trip. There was like a weird energy between them, for whatever reason. But then, Melody really didn't like her after she left the trip. Okay, she I don't I don't really think that Melody cares if Trisha and Martell had anything. I really don't think she cares. 
I mean, you you couldn't tell based off at the dinner her reaction. I honestly think Melody's reaction at the dinner table when Tisha brought up the the Martell and Trisha stuff was the fact that she didn't want to give Martell screen time. She did not want to give Martell any air time on on her girls' trip. I that's what I felt like Melody's face was giving. Like, why are we talking about this man? Why are we talking about this man? I do not want to talk about my ex. Okay. Anyways. So I found this conversation with Trisha. So Trisha brings up what happened during the girls' trip. She brings up Sunny comparing Sunny's situation to her situation. Ken's like, our situations are very different. Yeah, your situation is actually probably worse. Your situation might is probably worse. Trisha then brings up Shanita. And here's where Trisha lost me because I thought Trisha's a couple of, she took a couple of digs at Melody because they talked about Shanita and Shanita chiming in. And yes, Shanita was chiming in a little too much, but Trisha referred to Shanita as Melody's puppet. And I was like, okay, that was the first dig. I was like, hmm, all right. Then she says, you know, Ken brings up the fact that, you know, there are plenty of people that get into, you know, they're, they're getting a divorce or they're separated and they're dating other people. And Trisha's like, yeah, Mel. I was like, oh, okay. I, I should say it a little bit because because Trisha talks through her teeth. She was just like, like candy. And she talks through her teeth. She's just like, yeah, like male. That was another dig. And I was like, what are these digs about? And again, we're watching an edited show. I don't know if things were said or done that, and I, I don't know the sequence of events because some of you don't realize that sometimes these, sh- these shows film out of se- sequence. So what we're seeing now could have been filmed way after another scene that may have caused an issue between Trisha and Melly. I don't know. But I always point this out to you guys because I know people would me like, that was unprovoked. That Why did she do that? I thought it was weird. It was a weird energy that Trisha was giving in that moment because it felt like a, a couple of digs. Okay? Elsie says... Oh, hold on, Elsie. I lost your comment. Elsie says, El- Melody too... Wait, took st- two strays from from Trisha. What? I don't I don't understand what that comment was. So I was like, I was like, what is this energy about? Again, I'm giving grace to some of these folks because if I really just went off of the edit, that was weird for her to take a couple of digs at Melody, like, oh, Shanita was Melody's puppet, and then to say, oh, yeah, Melody was the one dating. Because my thing is. You know the situation with Melody and Martell. You know that M- Martell had a whole baby on Melody. So if Melody decided to go and get a man, even if they were still married and under the same roof, I, that's not the situation. But even if, <laughs> look, even if she decided to, she had every right to the way how badly that man cheated on her. Because let's not forget, not only did he have a baby with Coleslaw, he had a, another baby with Coleslaw that, uh, did she lose or did she, I don't remember what, but she was pregnant before. So you throw, your perfect example would have been Martel. Martel, you know, he was, he was getting a divorce and he was dating other people. I just thought that was interesting and weird at the same time. <sighs> Jamie says, yes, it feels like Trisha doesn't want to embrace herself and tell the truth about sleeping with Martell. I don't, be- I, look, at this particular point, you remember, re- roll the tape, go back to the earlier recaps. I was like, I don't believe that Trisha slept with Martell. But now I'm kind of looking at, did you? Because you've been caught in a couple of lies. And honestly, I th- based off what Marcel said, Martell didn't have a gym at his house. So why would she go there and train him? Because I was wondering that at first, but I was like, okay, maybe he has a gym. I don't, I, I don't know his house situation. There are plenty of people that have workout equipment at their home. But when Marceau said it, I said, oh, so he doesn't have a gym at the house. All right, so did Trisha know that? Like, Trisha, just be honest from the beginning, because now you're being caught out there, and now you look like a liar. <laughs> Elsie says, meaning Melody was the focus of Trisha's ire because of her relationship with Martel. Maybe. Maybe. Let me see. Oh, Mama Mama Tax says, Martell hit it. Why is she so weird with Mel? And like, why? And again, I'm giving grace. I said, maybe it's the edit, but it is weird. Like, it's a weird energy. And I felt like it was weird both on both ends. But then some of the comments that Trisha made in this conversation with Ken, I was like, hmm, that's interesting. 
And then they they talk about her possibly hanging out with Martel and what Martel has been saying to the other group. And Ken says he's going to have to have a conversation with Martel for kind of make, insinuating that something more may have happened between him and and Trisha. All right, all right. Honestly, I, I could care less about that scene. Guys, if you're just joining us, we're talking about the latest episode of Love and Marriage Huntsville. I won't be here long because I got to go. So I'm going to move on. Tisha and Marcel. Tisha, you're trash. Why did Tisha... I thought you and Dr. Shanita made peace during the trip. You guys, yeah, she called you the ops. And I said, we know that Tisha's the ops, but Dr. Shanita, you're doing too much. But by the end of the trip, it seemed like they made amends only for, for Tisha to come back and refer to, because Marcel's like, oh, is, is she tall? He's like, I think I've seen her before. And yeah, she was like, yeah, tall like a guy. This this is what Tisha said. And I said, wow. Like, that was unnecessary. That was unnecessary. Espos, leave me alone. I'm pretending like, like they're real, like, fanatic fans. And we call them the Espos, Tisha fans. Espos, leave me alone. <laughs> Exactly. Funky says that Ken needs to question Trisha. She has him looking pitiful. And I said that from the jump, from last season, you know, season 900. (laughs) I said, you just found out about this? She didn't give you a heads up before filming this? About what really went down? She's telling you on camera? Okay. All right. So Tisha and Marceau have this conversation about the... Honestly, if... Marceau sounds like the 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 voice of reason. Like that's saying a lot. All right. <laughs> Kimberly says Tisha has fans. Yes, we, we call them the Espos. <laughs> if you weren't here the last couple of weeks and you com- it's completely going over your head. <laughs> no, Tennessee girl says Tisha has fans. Yes, the Espos. Espos unite. <laughs> Look, Espos unite. For those that are listening to the podcast version of this, this is why you got to watch the video too. Espos unite. Okay. <laughs> All right, moving on. Daphne says that, don't forget, Tisha is Miss Wanda's baby. Children learn what they live. Well, okay. Y'all are still reacting to to Tisha having fans. Okay. Um, So, Marceau brings up that fact that he's like, they they talk about the Trisha stuff and and how Trisha reacted during the girls' trip. And Marceau says he, he finds it interesting that you can train someone that doesn't have a gym at the home. And I was like, oh... Oh, okay. All right. I, I, look, only they would know. I just went off and like, okay, maybe he has a gym at the house. Fine. But according to Marceau, Martel doesn't have a gym. So Trisha, did Trisha know that going there? Like, there's a, Trisha, the situation with you and Martel, look, I don't trust a word that comes out of Martel's mouth, but now he, you're starting to make Martel look more credible than you. And that's saying a lot. That is saying a lot. Anyways, so they talk about the Trisha and Martel stuff. They also discuss Martel making jokes about Destiny's son looking like him. And Marcel makes a good point. The fact that Martel keeps making jokes like that, he can understand why Melody doesn't see it for, for Destiny. But Melody has a whole list of reasons why she feels like you always have Martel's back, you don't have mine. And honestly, because of how contentious things are between Martel and Melody, I can understand Xing out anyone, anyone that would be associated with him. I literally just had that situation in my own life. I was just like, you're friends with someone that did this to me. Oh, no, no, no. We can't be friends. And I'm never going to tell somebody who you who you should be friends with. But I, my thing is when a, cer- a situation gets to a level of people's safety, people's character, I can't be friends with you. Or if anything, we could be associates, but we are not going to be deep friends because I don't know what you're going to carry over back to him. And especially with Martel and especially with Destiny being inconsistent, I can understand Melody not wanting to be cool friends with her. But I will say Melody was nice to Destiny during this girl's trip, despite their issues. Okay? Oh, not calisthenics. They were doing calisthenics? All right. I don't think a, a man would be doing a lot of calisthenics. Yes, we do calisthenics, but if you're going to be trained by someone, you're going to want some weights. You're going to need some stuff. Okay? But Marcel brought up, like, when she trained you, Tisha, you guys did what? Y'all went to the gym. Points were made. So Marcel says, he, like, I could understand why Melody might be upset. He's always making these jokes. Martel's making these jokes. Like, he did sleep with Destiny, talking about how the, how the kid looks like him. I was like, all right. 
I mean, uh, I never thought about that, Marcel. Thank you for clarifying. And then they talk about the whole respectful cheating thing. And Marcel defends De- uh, Melody again and says that, I just don't see that happening. I don't believe that Melody was helping Coleslaw respectfully cheat. But Tisha says, I could see Martel getting off on the fact that two women are fighting over him. Yes, of course, of course. Hence why probably Melody doesn't like talking about him on the show. If she's in a scene, she doesn't want to talk about him. I don't blame her. I don't blame her because he probably gets off on the fact that he's a part of her storyline. The fact that we don't see Martell a lot, you know, I don't know what Martell's contract looks like, but he's not the, the brightest person. So is he getting paid per episode? Because he's out of a lot of episodes last season and this season. So I wonder what his check is looking like. <laughs> Anyways, I mean, he's still a producer. Doesn't mean much. because I just feel like he he doesn't know what he's doing when it comes to his business. H- hence what his business has gone through. Just saying. Guys, if you haven't already, be sure to like the video. It's easy and it's free. We're talking about the latest episode of Love and Marriage Hunt. So don't forget the Kempire After Dark live experience. For those that don't know what that is, it's not what you're seeing here. All the stuff that I can't say here, I'm saying there during the Kempire After Dark live experience, okay? That's where we talk about whatever is the latest thing happening. And for those that are wanting to hear my first thoughts right after the premiere of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, that is where I'll be making it. My thoughts on New York, my thoughts on Salt Lake City, all of that will be mentioned there, okay? So if you're in L.A. or will be in L.A. or want to be in L.A., I'll be coming there at the Bourbon Room Hollywood on November 20th. Ticket information is available in the description. But if you're in London or near London or can be in London, I'll be in London on December 8th. Get your tickets for that experience for that. We're working on some other things while I'm in London as well. And then I'm coming back to Washington, D.C. on January 24th. Go get your tickets for that information. All the things in regards to Kempire, including our cameo. I just got a cameo request last night. That was fantastic. I love I love some of the cameo requests that you guys do for your birthdays, anniversaries. But if you just want a, a key key or advice i love those more i'll just say more information on everything kempire including our merch look like the kemp Kem- house of kempire hat look at that that is embroidered you see that embroidered limited edition okay uh, limited edition go get your your merch today at houseofkempire.com more information on that will be available in the description let me say thank you guys don't forget to like the video it's easy and it's free i will drop the call link really quickly but you guys have to be done. I got to get out of here. I got things to do. I got to, look, I'm, I'm packing. I'm I'm trying to also set up for Christmas because by the time I get back, I need to really set up for Christmas because then, you know, I'm flying out <laughs> to London. Like, I'm not doing another uh, tour. I'm done after this. <laughs> Twan, thank you, Twan the Don, for the super chat. Twan says, Mel's sidekick really pissed me off this whole trip. Like, seriously, should Dr. Shanita, your opinion wasn't necessary and or needed. Ma'am, looking like Muppet. Uh, T- Tamara's twin. Tamara's twin. Oh, damn. Tuan was really in his feelings about, about Dr. Shanita. Okay. Oh, thank you, Connie. Connie says, I love Kempire, irregardless of our upcoming adventures. This man is the real deal. Thank you. I don't know what upcoming adventures. <laughs> All right, let me take a sip. Tennessee Girl says, this episode was a dud. It really was. Let's talk about the final scene with Marquez, Trisha, and Ken. Here's the thing. They finally signed the divorce papers at the end of this scene, okay? But Marquez, and I think this is real for people, okay? He's in his feelings because he lost his family, he lost his his wife, his high school sweetheart. I understand it. Do I think he's innocent? Do I think that he really was absentee? Yes. When he says, you say I'm absentee, but I'm not absentee, is that your proof? <laughs> Is that your proof? And Trisha says, he's been absentee even before Ken was in the picture. Marquez then brings up, well, Ken was in your your comment section putting all kinds of emojis and things like that. And Trisha's like, nothing was happening between Ken and I when you you and I were still together. But some might say you were still a married woman. I don't believe that. I believe, you know, something because divorces can, you know, take time. It doesn't mean that you should just sit there and dry up because you're going through a divorce. But they weren't going through a divorce. Divorce. They weren't actively talking about getting a divorce at that particular time. They, I honestly think they only went, went through with getting a divorce was because she was on this show. Because her and Ken were together for two years. 
Marceau does mention, though, in, in his conversation with Trisha, what did he say? Did I write it down? I can't remember now. In regards to Trisha, did I not write it down? Oh no! Oh, I can I completely skipped over Kimmy and Maurice's scene. It was it was Maurice. <laughs> okay, let me just re- rewind a, a little bit. So Kimmy and Maurice's scene. Kimmy is doing all kinds of shucking and jiving for for Maurice because at the end of the girls' trip, you were talking about you know I never done a girls' trip before, but this turned out to be really nice. Only for her to be talking all kinds of smack about the girls' trip when she's in front of Maurice. Like, oh, I, don't, I hate girls' trips. Uh, da, da. Yeah, but at no point... Oh, Nacho Twin says, keep skipping it. No, I wanted to mention that Maurice said he he's wondering if Trisha might not like Ken as much as he likes her. And he's like, you know what, maybe we need to, you know, have a conversation with them. Why would y'all need to have a conversation with them? Again, this is them producing. This is them trying to have a moment, trying to have a scene because you guys have nothing else. Why would you need to have a conversation about these people's relationship? Why? So that's what he says. Do you guys believe that that Trisha doesn't like Ken as much as he likes her? I mean, some people are comfortable with that dynamic. Maybe. Maybe. The, but the thing, the two things that stood out to me in that Kimmy and Maurice scene was the fact that Maurice said said what he said about Trisha's relationship with Ken, but also Kim Kimmy's hypocrisy on at the end of the the, the girls trip. Like you were talking about, I, if you had remained consistent, you didn't like the girls trip at the end, but you were you did a whole speech at the end, <laughs> a whole speech at the end of the girls trip. Like you know, I don't normally like girls trip, but this turned out to be really nice. Only for you to be in front of your man, like. Psst, that girl trip was terrible. Nell was starting all this beef with me and blah, 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 blah. I was like, oh, okay. And yes, Nell was definitely doing too much and she shouldn't have involved herself. I think we all can agree. But now I'm looking at you sideways, Kimmy. I'm looking at you sideways. So the, the, the last thing, Marquez, Trisha, and Ken, they talk about the issues. They rehash all of their issues. And Ken, I think Ken is a stand-up guy. He's trying to do his best. He's trying to be gracious to Marquez and respect Marquez. Marquez is concerned that there was some sort of overlap in his relationship with Trisha and Trisha's relationship with Ken. They claim that there wasn't an overlap. I don't know if I believe that anymore because Trisha doesn't seem like a credible person. And I think that sweet, demure, quiet personality makes us think that she wouldn't do something like that. But it's always the quiet ones. And she's already been caught in a couple of lies. And she says she only did that because she know she knows how what it would look like. Okay, girl. I I look. Marissa Marissa Kino, thank you so much for the super chat. Marissa Kino says we knew Destiny lied about the respectful cheating because Mel Martell and Slow Slow Slaw said the communication was about catching out Martell if he was still pursuing Slow Slaw. Oh yeah, I remember that. That see that's that's how long the show has been on. The, and honestly, that never came out on the show. So that's the the sad part about watching Love and Marriage Huntsville, if you don't pay attention to the drama offline, then you're confused. You're like, oh, you believe one... This is why context is important. I was just talking about this when we were talking about Monique did that interview slamming Carlos King. If you missed that video, Mods, if we can post that in the, the live chat. We posted that yesterday where Monique basically says that she, the one thing that I signed up for it turned out to be something else. She says that Carlos King used the black card to lure her into doing Love and Marriage Huntsville only to use her name to, 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 to launch that show. And then it fell apart. She said th- he did her worse than Bravo did her. And she says, you know, the way that they edited it made me look worse than, than it actually was. And I said, this is where context is important. I, do I believe Monique 100%? No. However, I do believe, yeah, con- context is important. Uh, Tati, not Tati called Ken, Ken Slaw, because, you know, the, he, he referred to himself, as, well, Martel referred to him as the number one side piece in the in this relationship, because uh, Trisha's still married to this man. I'm assuming when she signed the divorce papers, now they are officially divorced. But Marquez tries to defend himself during this conversation, and tries to allude that there was an overlap in their relationship, tries to kind of wash over. Look, I do believe Marquez was an absentee father. I do believe that he walked away from his family. I do believe Trisha in, in regards to that because based off of what Marquez has tried to explain to us, it didn't make sense. 
It didn't make sense. He didn't do himself any favors in explaining that. Do I believe his crocodile tears? No. And I'm glad that they left in Trisha saying that. And her confession was just like, and Ken was trying to be respectful. He's like, you know, if you ever need to talk, you know, feel free to, you can talk to me. So I felt for him when he was boohoo, boohoo crying at the table. And Trisha was just like, "Mm -hmm, I've seen these tears before. I do believe he's manipulative. I do believe he played a part in the reason why this relationship didn't work anymore. But why, Trisha, did you not push for a divorce? We have to remember that. It wasn't like she had filled out the paperwork and she was ready to go. Like, that all happened this season. She also was dragging her feet with the divorce, hence why Maurice was sort of like, does she still have feelings for Marquez? Like, why didn't she get this divorce? Just saying. Exactly. Nacho says, no accountability, so stop the crocodile tears. (sighs) Hold on. Kevin says, Monique Samuels always perpetuates a victim. Hashtag exhausting. But I think two things can be true. I I think that she could lack some credibility on Monique Samuels, but also, we also have seen Carlos King be accused of some shady stuff in regards to producing his shows. We've seen that. Uh, Brenda says, Carlos Boo will will get paid one way or another. Didi says, they've been together since high school, so they grew apart. Yeah! Things happen. And I could see him because he's like, I don't have anybody right now. Look, whoa, 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 Marquez, you'll find another. You'll find another. He just, look, I think, didn't Trisha allude that he also had his own little, you know, other side situations? She didn't say that he cheated, but she, she alluded that he also had moved on. Okay. Marquez moved them in the house, and two weeks later, Ken Slaw moved in with his one bag. Oh, you guys are a mess. Um, cut and paste, Tisha. Thank you. Tisha? The leader of the Espos? No. Why is it okay for all the other ladies who defended Destiny be called her friends, but Shanita's labeled Mel's bodyguard for defending her? I mean, that's what they're labeling her. I mean, I, I look, I will say that Dr. Shanita did not do herself any favors because she did come across... It's one thing to defend your friend, but Dr. Shanita, l- the way she was puffing up her chest, the way that she got up when when Destiny got up... And look, some people say, well, that's what friends do. They Like, real friends have each other's back. But she wasn't doing herself any favors that every time there was a situation with Melody that she had to puff up her chest, stand up like she was going to fight. That really made her look like the bodyguard. Honestly, in my opinion, in my opinion. But I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. How is it not defending? How is it, you know, defending your friend a bad thing or being a bodyguard? Other people do it all the time. Maybe. Maybe. Guys, if you haven't already, be sure to like the video. It's easy and it's free. Can we get to 400 likes? Yeah, let's get to 400 likes. Members, I'm going to drop the calling link for you guys. Actually, no. I'm going to drop the calling link for the general audience all together right now. Keep liking the video. It's easy and it's free. And while I'm doing that, go get your tickets for our LA show this week. I'll be in London the next month. And then I'm back in DC in January. All that ticket information is available in the description. And of course, more information on our sponsor for today, Uncommon Goods, if you're looking for a gift, is available in the description as well. All right. Let me just drop this really quickly. And we're taking quick calls, guys, because I got to go. I got things to do. I still got things to do. Hold on. Shout out to everyone watching on, on Twitch and Twitter and TikTok behind the scenes. We see you guys. We see you. Let me see. Okay. There we go. All right. Let me see what you guys are saying in the chats. Let me see. Jean says, Shanita came on the scene trying to shake the table. It was weird. Yeah, she was doing, even with the whole Destiny stuff this week, her chiming in when it wasn't necessary. Like, why are you chiming in in a situation that doesn't even involve you? It didn't even involve her. So she was already doing too much. All right? (sighs) Let me see. Paula says, Bell Collective is making interesting, is it making interesting love and marriage? I'm not sure what she meant by that, but I'm still not watching Bell Collective. I'm done with, like, Carl's shows. Unless something dramatic is really, really good and, and the collective is saying, I mean, I say the collective you guys are saying, oh, my God, this is so good. This Then maybe I'll get into it. I did watch Eat, Slay, Love. That was cute. It was, like, three episodes. I enjoyed it. Is it worth me talking about? No. It was good, though. I enjoyed it, but it was, like, three episodes, and I was like, what's happening? Okay. okay. But it was good. 
Island Girl says Martell never protected her and they used to do and say whatever so they don't like someone taking up for Mel, hence the disdain for her fans, the Melamitas. God is Me says Sharnita stated that she w- worked as security for a high end stripper. What? Regardless, glad someone was there for Mel. Mel says she's got goons too. What? God is Me? What? She worked as security for strippers? You made that up. <laughs> what? You made that up. That is hilarious. God shall say, I disagree on Mel always having a bodyguard. Mel ha- has said she told the cast to get to know people for themselves. No one has denied that. One thing I forgot to mention that Marceau mentioned during the episode, because when they were talking about Dr. Shanita, he mentioned, he was like, oh, she's her friend this year, but she won't be here next year. I forgot to mention that. How did I forget to mention that? Woo 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 says, I like Dr. Shanita. She was just asking questions like everyone else at the table. no. It was definitely giving look. No matter if you're a fan of Melody or or Dr. Shani, she was doing a lot. She was definitely doing a lot. More than she needed to do as a friend. You saw Lauren was there. Lauren didn't say much of anything, which is fine. And I'm not saying that Dr. Shanita had to be a Lauren. But for a person that's new to the group, you were doing a love. Okay? A, a love. I was reading um, Kimberly saying a, a lot. Damn, talk about Eastlay Love Kempire. No. Look, no. No, because you guys, two of you will show up if I did a recap of Eat, Slay, Love. I'm not doing it. I, I, my time is precious. I don't know about y'all. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Jamie says that Marquez is ignorant and irresponsible. Yeah. Dion says, Destiny is negative energy, period. She was upset at the clo- closing dinner that the takedown plan that the Alliance planned, planned to execute on the trip failed. Oh, is that what it was? Mm-mm. <laughs> Kimberly says, not Big Shirley from Security. Did you guys know Martin? You know, the TV show is now on Netflix. I started watching that. Then I started, then I got into This Is Us. What am I doing to myself? <laughs> what am I doing to myself? I'm gonna have to mix it up to to to, to some sad with the laughter. Okay. <sighs> hey, Sarita. Sarita says, all the way from Virginia Beach. Thank you, Campfire. Thank you so much for the love. Guys, don't forget to like the video. We're almost at 400 likes. All right. Oh, let's see. Marie says, Kemper, I commend you for taking one for the team and watching the, that entire episode. Mm-mm-mm. Sharna says, Dr. Foster was doing what needed to be done. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jessalyn says, I miss your 90 Day Fiance recaps. We're going to get back to it. Probably not until the new year, just because there's so much happening between now and January. So maybe in the new year, we'll get back to Tuesday Takeover, where we talk about 90 Day Fiance and a lot of other things. But if you enjoy content like this, make sure you subscribe, guys. I'm going to get out of here. I dropped the calling link. No one called in. Perfect. I don't need to just talk about any of this. I need to go. Shout out to our King's Guard. Shout out to our channel members. Shout out to our subscribers. Shout out to those of you watching in the bushes. And shout out to the Espos. <laughs> and the Melameters. <laughs> okay. Shout out to all of y'all. <laughs> Keep watching. All right. Keep watching. Semhar says this show is still on I'm just here for the commentary love you thank you Semhar I didn't even know you were in the in the chat Semhar BC says Trisha's playing Ken like a fiddler I believe she didn't want to she didn't want to divorce Marquez she's going along with the program now because she knows that she F's up being in the relationship with Ken hmm that's interesting something something is fishy about about Trisha and it's the quiet ones there's something fishy about her all right La says, Marquez is a guilt, guilty crybaby who wanted to chase the so-called Atlanta dream. Hashtag fail. Hey, Dr. Payne, thank you for the roses on TikTok. Yeah, I wasn't falling for his tears. And then when they walked out, he was still at the table crying. <laughs> yeah, I do believe that some of that was real because he probably was like, damn, look what I did. I messed up a good thing. He was like, I messed up a good thing. Okay. God shall said the reality king is not kinging. I like the focus on smaller towns, but re- originality would help. I mean, there aren't a lot of Carlos King shows that are doing that right now, to be honest with you. Love and Maritimes will had its day, but I think its day is done. I think its day is done. They brought in Trisha as the, the, the new storyline, not interested. They tried to do that with now. People weren't interested in that. The girls' trip, I have to say, was successful and was interesting. But I'm good on Destiny. I don't think Destiny will be back in season 10,000. No matter how hard she tries. No matter how hard she tries. Exactly. LC says Marquez is still in high school. He really is. 
He really is. Barbados. Dion, did you go to the Fenty launch? Have you checked out Fenty? Now, now Fenty Beauty is now available in Barbados. Rihanna had a whole launch and everything like that. Congrats to to everyone. And, uh, and also, she ma- basically said Mar- that she ain't doing new music anymore. <laughs> that's that's what people were reading into her speech. Okay, Roman says those tears from Marquez were, were the tears of a manipulator. I agree. I agree. Like I wasn't falling for it. I do believe that he has some some hurt feelings because he lost a good thing. Okay. Jocelyn says I agree. Carlos needs to move on from this cast. <laughs> But he, he's tried. He's tried. And now he, we got Love and Marriage Detroit. None of you guys are talking about Love and Marriage Detroit. Is it even still on? Did it end? I see Bell, Bell Collective does have its its fans. That's the one thing I will say. Bell Collective does has, a fa- has its fans. But I was recapping that. Y'all weren't showing up for that. We would we would recap both Bell Collective and Love and Marriage Huntsville. I just gave up on Bell Collective because some of that stuff was getting a little too pre-produced. You remember when that man, what was it? <sighs> I forgot her name. I don't remember when that man came up and then oh, anyway, and Marie jumped up and she was like, oh, we had a time talking about that. Ooh, am I am unique, says Kemper. I'm glad you haven't accepted Carlos's money to run a narrative. Who told you that he was giving out money? Mm. I've I look. Mm. I could talk, but I'm on. I'm gonna leave it alone. Goodbye, <laughs> goodbye, y'all. I'm getting out of here before I say too much. It's the holiday season. Don't forget the Campfire After Dark live experience is coming. Maybe I'll tell that story in LA if someone remembers. Bring it up. I'll tell you the story there. That's what the Campfire After Dark live experience. That's where I dropped the tea. All right. Make sure you get your tickets for the Kempire After Dark live experience coming to LA this Wednesday at the Bourbon Room Hollywood. Ticket information is available in the description. Then we're coming to London. We're coming to London on December 8th. Get your tickets for that. And then we're coming back to Washington, D.C. on January 24th. More information on that and more will be coming. And New York, buckle up. All right. Bye, y'all. I'm getting out of here before y'all try to ask me anything about what I was just saying. Thanks for tuning in to Kempire here on the Kempire Radio Podcast. As always, don't forget to give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. And for everything Kempire Radio, head on over to KempireRadio.com. 